What's the worst thing about prison, prison Mike? The worst thing about prison is that the mentors, they fly everywhere and they suck the soul out of you and it hurts. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about this. Can you see that? The 35 millimeter F14, the magic lens, the magic. The ma Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It is me, I am Tung, and today we have the Fujifilm XF 35mm f1.4 lens review. This is one of those lenses that if you said anything negative about, you're going to get the entire Fujifilm community come to your house with pitchfork, demanding you to apologize if you said something bad about it. It's almost as bad as if someone were to switch from Fujifilm to Sony. Oh my god, it's so dumb. So I've been shooting with this lens for close to four to five years now. I took this lens traveling. I shot a lot of portraits with it, like so much portraits with it. Now I want to share my thoughts with you guys and what I think of this beautiful lens. Let's start with the build quality. So let's just start off by saying that this lens is old. In terms of camera age, this lens is geriatric as fuck. This lens is 10 years old. It was time for an update. Uh, so thank God for the 33 millimeter F1 for announcement. Let's hope that the 33 is almost as good as this lens that we're going to be talking about today. The build is cheap, it's light, it doesn't have the same heft to this lens like some of the newer lenses do in comparison. The aperture ring is very flimsy. So for anyone that cares about where the lenses are made, this lens right here is made in Japan. For me, I really don't care where it's made as long as it takes good photos. I don't think being made in China would affect its image quality or build quality or anything like that, like everything is made in China nowadays, like everything that you own in your house is probably made in China. So I don't get why some people feel the need to have their lenses made in Japan. That, that's just me though. You feel me? This lens is small and compact, making this lens a great travel companion. However, this lens is not weather resistant. When paired with the right camera like the X-S10 or the X-T4, this lens focuses quite well. But once you do continuous autofocusing with continuous bursts, this is where the lens uh, starts to show signs of its age. Put this lens on a Fujifilm X-T2 and the autofocusing is going to be a lot slower than if it was on the X-T4. So if you're going to shoot with this lens, you're going to need to be patient. When we talk about uh, this lens, we talk about how images are rendered with this lens. This magic that this lens produced, it's real, it's legit, it's really beautiful <laughs> and, and I really just love the images I shot with it recently. There really is that magic in this lens. It's the characteristics of the lens that makes everybody swoon over it. The rendering of the images is sharp where it needs to be and soft where it needs to be. It has this filmic look to the images, it really does and I would say some of my travel stuff I shot with this lens came out looking like really cinematic and for the most part I would say 99% of the time I really love this lens and if you're someone that is looking for that clinical sharpness you're not going to get it with this lens. The 35mm f1.4 renders some of the best image quality you can get from a Fuji X mount lens and I would say that this and the 90mm f2 have the best image quality. The wide aperture at f1.4 makes this a great uh, low light photography. As someone that shoots a lot of neon portraits back in the day, I can't tell you how much this lens uh, saved, saved my butt <laughs> when we went out to shoot. This was my go-to lens for like neon portraits back in the day or low light portraits back in the day. I just love it. It just makes me wonder why I sold it in the first place. Let's get on with the negatives, the quirks, the things that I don't like. Uh, the autofocusing is loud. It's loud. It's louder than other lenses and when the front barrel moves back and forth to grab focus, it, it almost sounds like someone is sending me a fax. So uh, I'm just gonna show you right now if you guys can hear this. I'll turn this on. All right. Can you guys hear that? Like that's crazy. That's fucking loud, dude. Yeah, it it takes. And on an XS10, this this autofocusing should be should be quick. 
Uh, this lens doesn't have the weather sealing. Yeah, I think if this lens had weather sealing, it would have made it more, that much more appealing. And you know how I said that I love the image quality 99% uh, of the time? Well, the other 1% is reserved for this problem I have with this lens is, and that is the rendering of some shots. Uh, let me try to explain. Sometimes the bokeh would be smooth depending on the location you shoot at, but there are times where it's not so great in my opinion. And I find when there's a lot of things going on in the background, the bokeh just tends to look like super busy. And it also has like this nasty like look to it, a nasty smudge to it. And if you're someone that pixel peeps a lot, you're not gonna like that about this lens. The images that this lens produce can look a bit grainy when the ISO is pushed a bit higher than other lenses. I've experienced this where I would have to retouch the subject's skin, but for whatever reason, there would be this like weird texture on the person's face that makes it hard for me to retouch. And I just remember this used to drive me crazy. I was trying to figure out what's wrong with it. Is it the camera's fault or is it a lens fault? And it's not until recently that I've noticed that it's a lens thing. And I guess this is also part of the characteristics of the lens. Just let me know if any of you guys experience this, if you're retouching any photos shot from this lens. And just let me know if you notice that grain thing that I'm talking about because as someone who shoots portraits, um, skin retouching is very important. And for someone who likes shooting with the 50 millimeter full frame equivalent, I used this lens a lot back in the day. For portraits, I was always so annoyed by that grain on the person's face. It just makes it so hard. Some people, they're excited for the 33 millimeter because they want that clinical look, which makes it a lot easier for people to retouch skin. And, and that's one of the reasons why I'm excited for that kind of lens. I've been shooting with Fujifilm for almost six years now, and I haven't experienced this with any other lens, the 16 to 55, the 50 to 140, the 35 F2, the 90 F2. They don't suffer from this at all. So I think it's just only the 35 millimeter F1 Ford that has this characteristic. I love this lens and I actually deem this to be one of the untouchables. I don't think I will sell this lens ever again. <laughs> the image quality is just too good. I honestly don't know why I sold it in the first place. I was just really, really dumb. But at the time, I just had way too many lenses, so I had to get rid of some to like downsize my kit because I was just traveling everywhere. And because of the pandemic and because of this YouTube channel, I actually bought this lens back six months ago and I've been enjoying this ever since. And who is this lens for? Basically, this lens is for anyone that shoots portraits, needs something that is fast for that low light capability. This could be great for the wedding photographers. They're, they're probably gonna enjoy this lens. Well, I feel like this lens could be for everybody. It doesn't have to be just for professional. It could be for anybody. Everyone's going to enjoy this lens. Uh, it really does have that film-like look to it. But again, if you're someone that is looking for that clean, clinical look, this lens isn't for you. If you're someone that wants one of the best, if not the best image quality that you can get from a Fujifilm lens, this is the one to get. If you're someone that wants to tell a story, evoke an emotion, there's nothing better than the 35 millimeter F1.4. There are characteristics that just going to make you feel like, you know, something in here. You know, you're, you're just gonna feel something in here and it's just gonna feel good. It's just gonna make you feel, feel something. And honestly, <laughs> It's great. It's gonna go down as one of those legendary lenses in Fujifilm's history. That is it for me guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did like this video, please do consider leaving me a like. I love chatting about this kind of stuff and it helps me out a ton. It gets my name out there to this uh, YouTube algorithm and it helped promote this channel. So if you wanna help brother out, please consider subscribing and liking my content. Otherwise, I'm switching to Sony, <laughs> what are your thoughts on the 35 millimeter F1.4? Do you guys love the 35 millimeter F1.4 as much as everybody else does in the Fujifilm community? Honestly, when I first heard the raves and the reviews, I thought it couldn't be that good, but boy, I was wrong. <laughs> Once I reviewed the images, I was a believer. This thing has some sort of voodoo magic in it thing right here. I can't believe this little fucker is like 10 years old and it still produces one of the best images in Fujifilm's lens lineup and this this lens is one of the OGs and don't forget to follow me on my Instagram at I am tongue that's where you're going to see more of my work I'm like Kawhi you know I I'm a fun guy <laughs> once again my name is tongue and I'll see you in the next video I love you
제발. <웃음>